Well, it's come to my attention that the world is currently on fire right now. So in these most dire circumstances, what does a man do? He digs deep and achieves a minor victory. Was it personal? Academic? Possibly life-changing? Yes, but actually no. What happened is I finally got a second controller for my Xbox. A great success. The plan? Grab some drinks, a celebrations box perhaps, and catch up on some local split-screen games with my brother. This Christmas season, we had a lot of old classics to go through. There was Cuphead, Lego Star Wars, OG version of course, maybe throw in some World of War Zombies, and we were finally gonna get back into Borderlands. What actually happened is that we played only one game this Christmas, and in a weirdly cyclical turn of events, it was actually our very first game we got with our Xbox back in 2008. That of course being Gears of War 2. This is our original disc, by the way, from 2008, and it still works. For those not in the loop, this is the one with chainsaw guns, and in the words of the best friends, the purest example of a video game ass game. It is truly one of the video games of all time, so unapologetically itself it nearly veers into parody, but somehow is all tied together by one simple fact. It has heart. I feel like I've been saying that word a lot recently, like, oh, Chainsaw Man has heart, this game has heart, my favorite film of all time, that has heart. And in my eyes, that to me is a clear passion for something that is being made, that you can feel it in every part of its production. It's a feeling that's difficult to really quantify or explain, you just know it when you feel it. And when I think about Gears of War 2, I'm always thinking about its heart, and not just in the gory, bloody sense that you get to cut one out. <laughs> Spoiler alert for a 14 year old game. Jesus Christ, this game is 14 years old, what the fuck is time? Outside of Vice City, this was actually our first 18 rated game, and let me tell you, seeing this at 9 years old, that changes a person, but my god, it was fun. It was so much fun. Maybe I'm still fresh off a particular subject that also featured chainsaws, but coming back to this game after so many bloated open world games and narratively complex stories, reminds me that as much as the medium continues to advance in many artistic boundaries, it all just gets a bit mind-numbing. You just spend so much time scrolling through the feed of similar-looking titles that it all just blurs together. Simplicity is a godsend. I love Christopher Nolan movies as much as the next film, bro, in their early 20s, but sometimes I don't want a fully layered cake because nothing can beat a simple slice of good old-fashioned fun. That simplicity makes Gears of War such an easy concept to pick up and engage with. Combat runs with this idea of straight lines being incorporated into encounters and the environments working together to create that synergy. You advance forward, press a button to get into cover behind any form of box, table, or unconsenting sentient being. Sorry. You shoot the enemies who emerge behind their cover until they're all gone, letting you push forward to the next arena. Rinse and repeat. Throw in some varied weapons, enemies that range in size, shape, and function moment to moment, and you've got a battle system that doesn't require much practice, yet when refined, rewards that experimentation with gory results. Simplicity really shouldn't be seen as a detriment when it's pulled off so well. It just feels like everyone on board had fun making it, and it shows in the constantly changing circumstances. Just gonna fire off a few quick examples to make this point. In 3, 2, 1. There's a bit where you're inside a giant worm and the enemies are basically its white blood cells. This then gets followed up with another close quarters encounter with Sirens who, much like the previous encounter, are given a logical reason to be exclusive to this area, which also just gives you an excuse to go ham with the Lancer. That facility, by the way, is also hit with a Razor Hail Storm which hurts both enemies and yourself. Then in Act 5, you ride Reavers, shooting at a large mutated Hydra, and just when you think we've hit the peak... But wait! There's more! Here's a Brumach. Go nuts! until he gets too hyped up on monster energy and needs to be put down with giant space lasers like, holy sh**. Who wants toast? I like them crispy. I don't know what happened between the first game and this one, but they obviously went to the Resi 4 school of throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks. Any other sensible publisher would call this self-indulgent, but who cares? You have to realize we still had a PlayStation 2 in our house. This is what video games looked like back then. We also had the PlayStation 1 version of Philosopher's Stone, so Blobfish Hagrid has lived in my head rent-free, but this hit different. It sounded different, it looked different. 
I find something so endearing about those early 360 games like Lost Planet or Condemned. Like they've still got that blocky 6th generation geometry with ears that look like bricks, just with a bit more shine. I'd argue one of the original trilogy's best attributes was its atmosphere. You could especially feel that in the pre-rendered trailers they used back in the day, whether it's the melancholy of the iconic Mad World trailer or the ashes to ashes reveal for Gears of War 3. I will say though, Rendezvous with Death is a banger. That one really doesn't get enough love. Especially in how it escalates the particular vibe of the original going into these more bombastic sequels. If the first game pulled from horror to influence its destroyed aesthetic, it also had the unfortunate side effect of covering everything in a thick coating of grey tones. Which was the style at the time? Gears of War 2 decides to go for the aliens approach, with more widely distinct visual tones, going from cities to underground caverns to the locust homeworld along the way. Alongside the collectibles, these locations have a tangible sense of geography, like you can see so much going on beyond what the linear path is showing, it's a really solid magic trick where the planet of Seraph feels like a bigger location than it actually is. What I'm trying to say is that Gears of War 2 passes the vibe check. Much like Big Man, you don't need a deep emotional reason for liking it. Because, come on, it's Big Man. He's just really thick, okay? That's kind of a summation on what playing this game is. There's a frenetic, almost roller coaster quality to its pace, seeing you go from bomb placement to tank mission to chainsaw battle with this metal motherfucker because it's constantly marching forward. And while a lot of people will play through it as Marcus Phoenix, since he is the huge hunk we see the story through, for many others, including myself, the perspective actually looked more like this. Because I was player two. I was seeing it through Dom's point of view. So there was this sweet spot around the 7th generation where local split-screen games still had a major presence, while online competition started to rapidly take hold over time. From a business perspective, it makes more sense to prioritize the newer technology to bring in more consumers to hypothetically play for longer. And it certainly did in a lot of cases. The amount of time I spent in horde mode, the weird ghost camera in multiplayer, and sharing those sniper montages back in the day are a testament to that connectivity. But if you ask me, the best part of Gears of War was always through split screen, and more specifically the campaign. Me and my brother would play this game over and over to try and find every collectible and try each path. Gears of War 3 was easily the most hyped game of 2011 for us, and for that month of September, if we weren't doing schoolwork or sleeping, we were playing these games. He would later go on to buy me the Brady Games strategy guide because I was so obsessed with how the locusts worked and by extension of that exposed me to the art direction. It was the first game that really got me to think about how an environment came together and how it could tell as much of a story as the dialogue did. The way Nexus pulls from Token to HR Giger to influence the Locust homeworld doesn't make it feel like a level, but a living civilization. From its ancient architecture molded from stone, to the culture relying on rockworms for food and prisoners for manual labor, to the natural use of torchlight to the more mechanically advanced cog army, the colors further show that distinction between the two sides. I genuinely remember it being the first time a game actually got me really emotionally invested in its story, and a big part of that was getting to play as the emotional heart of it. Rather than watching his story unfold, getting to play as Dom let the major story moments hit harder for me. He may not be the traditional hero of the piece, but the way cinematic director Greg Mitchell frames shots around Dom, he becomes the rock for the players to latch onto. He is the center in all of the chaos, especially for that one scene with Maria. Now, just hearing my voice try to explain the pain of this sequence really won't do it justice, but when looking at the difference between one and two, that tagline of bigger, better, more badass runs throughout this game's veins constantly. Except for here. Maria. All of that bravado fades away for this one moment. Maria. Even the score by Steve Jablonski knows how important it is for this moment to hit. Then comes the truth we all knew. This scene still gets me 14 years later. By today's standards, it's a basic narrative design, but it still has a raw quality which is so specifically tied to the era and technology that made it. Sure, it could hypothetically be remade and tinkered with, 
but that feeling will never be as powerful, as impactful as seeing it at that young age. Akin to Majora's Mask, I'd argue its age has actually made it hit significantly harder, because the dirty, rough look is what keeps it timeless. Having Maria look almost ghoul-like and the cold colors selling it harder than any remake ever could, after this point, I never looked at Dom the same way. He really was just biding his time till the inevitable day when it could all end. When that chapter came in for Gears of War 3, and it was called Brothers to the End, we knew he wasn't going to make it, and I don't know, I guess having someone beside me on the couch was the glue that kept me coming back to the original games. In all honesty, there's nothing overtly wrong about the new games made by the Coalition, but that's also my problem. They don't feel like anything. They feel sanded off, clean in nature, and that just makes it feel hollow. They lack a certain passion, and when that core principle is missing, then why should we care? It's why me and my brother simply just don't have the time to put into these games anymore, and in all honesty, Gears of War as a series probably wasn't meant to survive past the seventh generation, and that's probably where it should stay. But why should that be seen as a bad thing? It is simple by today's standards, and that's why it's a breath of fresh air to play in 2022. Just sitting down to gather all the gameplay footage for this video didn't feel like a chore, but a chance to just forget about the stress that comes with getting older and just lose myself in a video game for just a little bit. It's simple, it's fun, I just really liked it. Heck, I still like it now. If you're like me and have found yourself getting overwhelmed with the abundance of overly priced games with too many meaningless mechanics layered on top, Replay Gears of War 2, especially if you've got a roommate or sibling you can share it with. Video games have this great ability to bring people together like nothing else can, and for these cold winter months, we can use all the comfort we can get, even if it is down the barrel of a chainsaw machine gun. I really like video games, I hope that's apparent. They've been a great source of comfort that's made the low points of my life more tolerable and the highs even better. Boot up the game and have some fun. It'll remind you why you love the medium in the first place. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Delta out.